Hello, welcome back to Blender Sushi Live Noting. So back to this um, face OSC business, um, I will continue and this time I will actually um, use the raw data of face OSC and kind of transfer all the data into Blender. And this is all happening in real time. So as you already know, um, I have face OSC running and currently it's tracking my face. Um, within the 640 by 480 um, streaming image of my webcam. So um, here you can see really, uh, really clearly what's actually happening. So I set up the add OSC in Blender uh, just like before. I, I set it up so it's listening to this uh, local port address and this is the, the port number and then it's updating in a, every 10 milliseconds. I can actually increase this to one millisecond, but I'll just leave it like this. Okay, so what's going on here? Um, we have actually from the raw data, we have around um, 132 um, OSC data and value. It's actually corresponding for 66 X and Y points. Um, and for that, um, I have already set up the this uh, keying set um, that's actually I generated using Python script over here. So I'm using this uh, just a short, uh, like a small Python script to basically generate, uh, kind of generating this um, keying set for at OSC uh, to track with. So um, here I have actually um, I use animation nodes to generate um, 66 empty objects, um, the instance of empty objects, and then they are all named um, uh, nicely here with 001 and up to 66. And I call it row.00 whatever number. And so um, the add OSC will continue reading the data from um, face OSC and it's kind of moving the empty in real time. So that's that's what's happening first. And this is still kind of work in progress. Uh, I think there are plenty of possibilities here. Uh, you can, of course, use any of this uh, empty and kind of process it in any way you like. I have not actually um, changed anything here. Um, I, ha I haven't like modified any of the value. It's just coming uh, from face OSC. Uh, face OSC, and if I normalize the data, if I turn on the normalize, um, what's going to happen is that this is like an al alternative of the of the data. So you can you can see here uh, this is if the data is normalized and the face is always centered. You might actually want um, this kind of a uh, setup. Um, yeah, that's actually another alternative. But for now, I just turn off normalize and then back to what we have before. So we have a bunch of empty, they are all moving in real time and you can actually record this, you can bake it. But if now I, if I switch to Fairchalk add-on and I will show you what's, what we can do with it. So here with Fairchalk, I'm actually, I'm grabbing, I'm selecting all the empty and then grabbing all the transform value and using some kind of stretch of trickery, I generate um, vertices here. And based on that vertices position, I'm using it to generate circle. And so this is what we have. Just a, an object that we can change the color. It's just like a circle for every point being tracked. So it's pretty cool. I can actually move my face from corner to corner. So there is a limitation if I, I move my face too much and then it's it goes out of the boundary and it stops. And now it's back to normal. I can go pretty low, but anyway, as long as my face is within the reach of the webcam, this is still gonna work. Um, I noticed that with the face OSC, sometimes it uh, is it doesn't track perfectly. Sometimes it's just, so there is some kind of limitation, but still pretty good. And you can do this in real time and really experiment with it. Um, so what else we can do here? With Spherechalk, you can you can monitor well, what's actually going on. So here I'm using, I'm turning on the index number. So from six, uh, 66 
points being tracked in real time. You can see 0 to 16 is actually correspond for the jaw. And then you can also kind of uh, um, observe this. And then, okay, this that's for the eyebrow. And there's the eye blink. Eye blink is actually not so good, I realize. Um, it's only good for the like uh, eye placement. But if I want to make the character blink, this is not a, probably not very good for it. Maybe just a slight motion of the eyes can simulate blink, but needs some kind of uh, adjustment there. For the nose, you get you see the nose line and then this line as well. So that's, you can use, and then the lips, the lips actually not too bad as well. So this is um, the 66 row data or row points that uh, can be tracked in real time. On top of this, of course, you have the, the pose and um, gesture, uh, like a tilt for the head and then all, so you can combine all together to create some kind of um, an emoji or like a facial um, tracking animations. Uh, it probably has some limitation again, but still, this is pretty cool. And if you like to do something different, for example, um, you can perhaps use like a, let's say if you're experimenting with a KD3 and then you generate you use the, the points. Um, we can use the points of the circle and then kind of generating um, like a edges based on this. Probably it looks something interesting. I'm gonna try this. So there we go. That's uh, that's KD three doing its work. Um, Spare talk is pretty cool for this kind of thing. I can turn off the that. Oh no, I I just gonna leave it like this. I can increase the number of edges to be generated on the fly. Um, and then this is happening in real time. It's uh, six frame per second. Not too bad. I, if I make this full screen, now goes up to seven or eight frame per second. Um, what else? Uh, I think we can increase this maximum distance. Okay, now it's starting to look a little bit more interesting. I don't know. Maybe maximum number to one. So yeah, that's my face being tracked. And then we are generating this KD3 edges on the fly as well. And since this is not like a normalized data, you can see the points getting closer and then it's getting further away if I move my face closer to the camera. Yeah, I think that uh, can be pretty cool effect. Um, remember that all these edges can be rendered. Um, what else we can do here? Points, actually we don't need to see these points. Well, I guess uh, that's pretty much if I I can do more improvisation, um, like maybe randomize it or I don't know. Uh, but yeah, anyway, this is like the mass is being generated on the fly and then the positions being updated in real time. Um, my plan is actually if you want to apply this face um, into another face or like a character, you you really need to think about the 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 character uh, face rig to match these uh, points being tracked. Mm, and remember, this is actually just a 2D, 2D face tracking. It's not 3D. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of the limitations. But still, uh, you can kind of uh, work something on. OK, uh, one more thing is uh, we are actually looking from the bottom here. So yeah, this is back to my face just the points I don't know you uh, let me know in the comments below maybe you can give me more ideas but I think the the next thing I can do is to turn this into just like a simple single armature with 66 bones that I can track um, yeah if, and then you kind of transfer it to the rig you probably need to do some kind of weighting and all that mm. But yeah, I think, yeah, that's, but that's the whole process, basically how I 
I transfer, um, I'm processing the face OSC data on the fly using add OSC add-on again, and then kind of creating the buffer um, of empty using animation nodes, and then kind of process it using scratch up. All everything happening on the fly. So uh, yeah, I guess uh, we will see what we're gonna do next. And thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye.